Greetings everyone. Welcome to the lecture on art forms and material milieu of PGW culture. The PGW culture represents a well developed rural life. Some surplus production is indicated by the discovery of round and square storage bins. Agriculture was the main mode of subsistence. Animal husbandry and fishing was also practiced and agriculture specifically became a very important mode of subsistence from by the end of later Vedic period onwards. The main crops of this period were rice, uh, uh, its remains have been found from Hastinapur and barley, the remains which have been found from Noh. Wheat, however, does not appear to be a popular food grain. Cow and horse were the main domesticated animals. Bones of horse were recovered from the excavations at Hastinapur. So, from later Vedic period onwards, agriculture was definitely replacing or kind of, uh, if not replacing, then uh, there was a continued activity of pastoralism, but in addition to that, agriculture had become the mainstay of economy. Food grains and meat formed a major part of the diet. Hearths and agricultural implements have been obtained from Atranji Khera, uh, which kind of indicate these uh, dieting, these diet habits. The site of Jakhera has yielded sickle, hoe and a plowshare. However, most of the iron implements uh, are related to hunting or warfare. These include lances, spearheads, blades, daggers, arrowheads uh, and it is in the succeeding period of NBPW that we see agricultural implements increasing in number and being made of iron. So, when we say that PGW culture can be described as coterminous with iron technology, then one has to be specific about this that iron came to be used on a larger scale much later, uh, probably uh, uh, after 600 BCE onwards. And it is the NBPW phase that is Northern Black Polished Ware period uh, during which we come across uh, iron agricultural implements on a larger scale. The PGW pottery shows a remarkable degree of standardization. It was largely dominated by bowls of two shapes, a shallow tray and a deeper bowl, often with a sharp angle between the walls and base. The range of decoration was also limited. It was either vertical or oblique or criss-cross lines with rows of dots or spiral chains and some concentric circles. At Bhagwan Pura in the Kurukshetra district of Haryana, where several excavations have been carried out, there seems to be an overlap between the late Harappan and PGW cultures large houses that may have been elite residences and fired bricks that may have been used in Vedic altars. So, these are the findings which kind of uh, help us in understanding the society, culture and religion of contemporary times. Although the culture is des designated after the painted grey ware, it should be mentioned that this pottery constituted only about 10 to 15 percent of the total ceramic assemblage. It was evidently highly valued as a luxury ware. So, it was not as if the entire civilization or all the people in the civilization were using PGW or painted grey ware pottery. And by far the majority of the pottery still continued to be red ware. Some slipped, but mostly unslipped. In most cases, husks and mica were used as, uh, were also used and it is the red ware pots that met 
common people's uh, requirements, whether it was for fetching water or storing water or for storing cereals as well as for cooking. So, PGW levels in the iron using sites of upper Ganga Jamuna Basin may broadly be dated between the limits of 1100 to 700 BCE and the painted grey ware or uh, as well as northern black polished ware overlap between 700 to 500 BCE. The pre-iron phase of this culture which has yet to be firmly established may well antedate 1100 BCE. As you can see in this visual, a distinct shape could be identified as being related to painted grey ware pottery and these pot shirts also give lot of information about the level of finesse that the civilization had achieved. Now, if we are talking about the period from 1500 BCE to 600 BCE, then this can be categorized as the Rig Vedic period or the early Vedic period which extended from 1500 BCE to 1000 BCE while the later Vedic period can be designated as from uh, 1000 BCE to 600 BCE. The Vedic age from 1500 BCE onwards extended up to 600 BCE and the first centers of civilization emerged in the northern part of the Indian subcontinent. Max Muller believes it to be an anomaly to regard the race as Aryan because scientifically Aryan connotes nothing but a language. Uh, now coming to how Aryans developed Vedic culture based on Vedas. So, the meaning of the word Veda which is knowledge and this can be described as a collection of hymns, prayers, charms, sacrificial formulae and the four Vedas that is Rig Ved, Sam Ved, Yajur Ved and Atharv Ved that have been ascribed to the Vedic literature. According to some scholars, the Aryans seem to have lived somewhere in the area east of Alps in the region known as Eurasia that is the region of the Caspian Sea as well as the southern Russian steppes and gradually dividing into a number of tribes migrating in search of pasture. Some migrated to Greece and Asia Minor while some to Iran and some to India. And by the time they came to India, they came to be known as Aryans. This is proved by some Aryan names mentioned in the Kassite inscriptions of 1600 BCE as well as the Mitanni inscriptions of 14th century BCE found in Iraq which suggest that from Iran a branch of the Aryans moved towards the west. So, as uh, one can find out that Aryans were cattle rearing population and having come from Central Asia, they continued with, with this profession even in the Indian subcontinent in the beginning, especially during the Rig Vedic period. Now, coming to the Rig Vedic uh, religion, uh, which was primarily naturalistic, there were neither temples nor idols and the mode of prayer was simply recitation of mantras. Sacrifice was offered for Praja, Pashu and Dhan and not for spiritual upliftment or misery. Now, uh, early Vedic religion believed in a supreme god and did not believe in idol worship. They worship different forces of nature as the manifestation of supreme god. Vedic gods have been classified into different categories that is terrestrial, atmospheric and celestial. So, if we talk about early Vedic religion, then Indra, Agni, Varun, Surya, Rudra, Yama, Som, Marut, Vayu, Prajanya, Prithvi, Saraswati, Usha, Aditi, these were gods and goddesses. They were not given 
the same position however as male gods. People did not worship only for spiritual reasons but also for the welfare of Praja and Pashu. So, the material milieu was definitely very important and recitation of prayers, chanting of Vedic hymns as well as sacrifices or yajnas were the most important part of worship. The iron objects used by the PGW people fall under four broad categories. These were household objects, tools for agriculture, other craft tools and then weapons that were used for warfare or hunting. So, if we are talking about the PGW phase, then most of the iron implements that have been found uh, are pertaining to either hunting or warfare and very few for agriculture. Now, under the first category come such objects as nails, pins, hooks, needles, knives, which are reported from various sites and a pair of tongs that have been found from Atranji Khera. Although this site has not yielded any specific agricultural tools, a sickle and a hoe was found at Jakhera during the course of archaeological findings. So, we see that agricultural tools were conspicuous by their absence as far as PGW phase was concerned. Then chisels, borers, clamps, nails and hooks may have been used in carpentry uh, uh, as more and more specialization was definitely growing. Arrowheads mounted on cane shafts and projected from wooden bows have been used in warfare as well as in hunting. The arrowheads are found in simple forms as well as barbed and have a tang that is sometimes socketed. So, spearheads sometimes as long as 25 centimeter or more were mounted on bamboo shafts. Unlike arrows that were used for long distance attacks, whether on an enemy or a wild animal, the spear could be used only at a close range. So, very specialized kind of uh, uh, weaponry was being devised for hunting also. A very remarkable contribution of this period was that of glass technology. The discovery of two specimens of glass bangles from PGW levels at Hastinapur came as a significant addition to our knowledge of ancient Indian glass technology. However, this is not to say that it was being mass produced or it was uh, found in several other sites. Of the two glass bangles from Hastinapur, one is brown and the other black, resulting in both cases from the presence of iron. Besides bangles, glass beads have also been found from Allahpur and Alamgirpur. From Atranji Khera also comes a piece of glass of dark green color, which formed probably a part of a bottle or some other object. Uh, another very important site whose mention must be made is Jakhera. Jakhera has brought to light three human terracotta figurines made of well levigated clay. They are all hand modeled. And of these figures, two depicting a male and a female were found together. These have an ovalish to circular hollow behind the head, uh, stumpy arms, relatively thin waist and broad hips. A characteristic feature of these figurines was the incised decoration over the body, which in one case seems to be rather heavy. As you can see in this visual, all the features that I have just mentioned, these are PGW culture iron age images, where you can see a huge kind of a halo and also 
inscribed forms. Now that these people were skilled in various branches of technology, whether it was ceramics, iron, copper, glass, bone, etc. However, some objects that throw invaluable light on their knowledge of precision, uh, one can talk again about Jakhira findings, where four flat fish pieces of terracotta uh, have been found, which could be classified under two categories. In one case, there are three sides of which two are straight joining each other at a right angle, while the third one seems to be an arc of a circle. In the other case, there are four sides of which three are straight with intermediary angles of 90 degrees, while the fourth one seems to be an arc of a circle. Now, these findings probably demonstrate some knowledge of the concept of the circle, rectangle, shapes, sizes, etc. That PGW people also used scientific instruments such as divider is indicated by the intersecting circles incised on a pot shirt found at Jakhira. The nature of the houses of PGW culture varied. While the lower members of the community lived in round or rectangular huts of modest size constructed essentially of wattle and daub, the more well-to-do lived in sizable houses with mud walls, sometimes having as many as a dozen rooms. But since most of the habitation was made of thatched roofs and wattle and daub, it has not really survived the way dwellings of Harappan civilization, which even preceded this civilization, have survived. Burnt bricks do not appear to have been used for construction, though their presence cannot be denied. Generally squarish, these could have been used in religious structures like altars, etc. Terracotta discs with a variety of incised designs have also been found at most of the sites and these also could have some historical, some religious significance. There is not much evidence of large scale trade and commerce. Nonetheless, the iron ores of which tools were manufactured locally at various sites must have been brought through trade. So, one cannot really rule out the possibility of exchange, especially in a, in a, a product like iron ore which was definitely needed to make all these artifacts, weapons, etc. that we have just discussed. Similarly, semi-precious stones for beads would imply some sort of trade. However, barter must have been the means of exchange of goods and services since there was no system of coinage. The example of discs which is being displayed on the screen will give you an idea of the kind of shape that I have just discussed. This visual deals with the ceramic assemblage from Karsola in Haryana. Again, it is part of PGW culture. Now, PGW people with their iron technology definitely brought about a change in the settlement pattern in the Ganga Yamuna Basin. Their predecessors in this region, namely the Copper Horde people, seem to have been merely sporadic occupants and their mark has not been to the same extent as was of PGW people. It was the PGW period that brought Northern India to the threshold of what later on came to be known as the second urbanization, that is the period from 6th century BCE. The glory lost through the fall of the Indus civilization was regained after a lapse of almost 1000 years by the immediate descendants of the PGW people, that is 
NBPW people that is Northern Black Polished Wear. On the solid foundation laid by the PGW culture arose the superstructure in which during the 6th and the 5th centuries BCE, the legendary Mahajanapadas emerged. So, when we talk about NBPW, it refers to an urban Iron Age culture of the Indian subcontinent extending from 600 BCE to 200 BCE. It succeeded the PGW culture as well as black and red wear culture. It developed and it coincided with the emergence of 16 great states or Mahajanapadas in northern India and the subsequent rise of the Mauryan Empire. The pottery of the Mauryan period is generally referred to as NBPW. They were characterized by the black paint and highly lustrous finish and were generally used as luxury items. They have often been referred to as the highest level of pottery. It is an urban Iron Age Indian culture which started developing around 700 BCE from late Vedic period onwards and it reached its peak around 300 BCE coinciding with the emergence of 16 Mahajanapadas in northern India and the subsequent rise of the Mauryan Empire. So, the evolution of art forms from prehistoric to protohistoric to historic period indicates the aspects of continuity and change. Continuity and change cannot be disregarded. It is not as if when prehistory ended, protohistory began. There were many similarities and the continuity aspect definitely was part of this overall process of change also. Thank you.